their logic is if capital invests that will create new jobs and that will create growth but capital investing does not create new jobs or growth unless what is invested the ag agriculture is dropped from near 5% to 2% your services sector is showing for the first time they have an index called the pmi that index when it goes down below 50% that means it's contracting for the first time the pmi has gone down below 50% so their whole agenda is the entire hindutva polarizing agenda they are absolutely not talking about anything connected with people's livelihood every day you require a shift in the direction of the policies well why we are here in the sorry state of affairs which you like you rightly said even the corporates today are very very worried and concerned there are essentially two reasons for it one is that ever since this modi government has assumed office they have been pursuing the neoliberal economic trajectory in a much more aggressive manner this was accompanied by the foreign policy orientation of the modi government also to reduce india as a junior partner of the united states of america in world affairs now reduction as a junior partner has its implication not only in the fields of defense production today india is considered as a major defense partner of the usa on foreign policy positions every single foreign policy position today india takes is that of the united states of america but it also has a reflection on the economic policy the world is going through an economic crisis which everybody knows since 2008 financial meltdown the global capitalist economy has not been able to recover so what does the international finance capital which is leading the global uh, uh, imperialist globalization today what does it require it requires the markets and the resources of developing countries for their uh, exploitation so that they can maximize their profits and seek to emerge out of the crisis now in that process india becoming a junior partner is that we have allowed the foreign capital to have access to every single stream of our economy the net result is your domestic corporates and capital is being edged out <clears throat> so that is why you find at one level the domestic capital either has to collaborate with foreign capital as junior partners so their dominant role earlier has now been reduced to a sec secondary role now even that is not working for the other reason which this government and earlier the congress government also refused to see it was so blatantly visible is that <clears throat> when you have is lo the logic of capitalism is that if profits are maximized that means it can only happen by intensifying exploitation of the people if you have a shining india you will have a suffering india if the shining india is shining more the luminosity of shining india is directly proportional to the degree of suffering of the exploited india so the result is what that profits may be maximized but people in general vast majority of people don't have money in their hands to buy now capitalism cannot grow profits cannot be made if what is produced cannot be sold so you require people who have money to buy that is reducing so what this bodhi government has been doing in the last 3 years is concentrating on making capital available for investment their logic is if capital invests that will create new jobs and that will create growth but capital investing does not create new jobs or growth unless what is invested what is produced out of that investment is sold globally capitalist crisis you can't sell in the world indian exports have fallen lowest in the last 20 years now domestically people don't have money to buy so where will growth take place so this is the crisis and they are barking upon the wrong tree the modi government and they are doing it much more aggressively than before and that is why all these things have accumulated together part of this demonetization was also part of this surrendering to the international finance capital 
idea of demonetization is actually to reduce cash in the economy, make people move to digital form. Digital form is what profit maximization for the digital uh, for the companies, which are essentially foreign companies. You'll have internet. I mean, Indian subsidiaries, but eventually all of them pay royalty to the for, foreign master. I mean. Those four major foreign uh, companies that control your digital transactions. And secondly, the demonetization was meant to not allow people to withdraw money from the banks. Thereby, the bank's balance sheets improved. So earlier, when the banks collapsed, the governments used to bail out. Now what demonetization done is instead of bailing out, it's bail in. That don't allow people to withdraw their own money. So banks will be saved, but people are ruined. And then on top of it, the GST, the way they've implemented it. So all this put together has virtually ruined our economy. And that is the reality. Every single strata is feeling the entire pinch of it. And uh, the rich have become richer. One percent of Indians today have a GDP in terms of the GDP, it's more than 60% of the GDP as their assets. So the rest of the 99% have between themselves only 40% of the GDP. Three years ago, this percentage was 49% on the other side and 51% for the rest of India. Now it has gone up to more than 60 and less than 40. So that is the Indian reality. And that is why the corporates are worried, because what will the corporate do? There's nobody there to buy it. And he can't sell it abroad. So, so that is why you require a change in the direction. The left, that's why I said the direction has to change. What does the left uh, suggest? You see, you basically identify what is the basic problem with the economy. The basic problem is people don't have money to buy. Now, how can you give people money to buy? Because if only when they buy, the economy can grow. Now today, in your manufacturing is slumped to the lowest. Industrial growth is is one one point two percent. They claim, and even that is a dubious figure. Uh, I mean, according to according to me, and according to many statisticians, because the the manner in which they're calculating that is also a very questionable. The ag agriculture has dropped from near five percent to two percent. Your services sector is showing for the first time they have an index called the PMI. That index, when it goes down below 50%, that means it's contracting. For the first time, the PMI has gone down below 50%. Your big IT companies are announcing huge layoffs. I mean, Infosys, Cognizant, Wipro, all of them are in the layoff uh, mode. Now, they, in this situation, what you require is to empower economically the people. Now, how can this be done? That can only be done through a massive dose of public investment by building much needed infrastructure. When you start building your roads, your dams, etc., through public investment, not through your PPP project, through your public investment, then you will generate lakhs and lakhs of new jobs. Our youth today, who are aimlessly moving around today with insecurity, when they find the jobs and when they spend their wages, that increases the domestic demand, and that will be the impetus for manufacturing to grow. So what is required is to shift the trajectory from making capital available for corporates to public investment to generate greater jobs. The question naturally arises, where does the government get the money for public investment? Now that is where the, uh, the basic issue comes up. What did this Modi government do in the last three years? Today you have, according to official government estimates, five lakh crores of rupees of corporate loans that are not being paid back. Now, international agencies estimate the same, 5 lakh crores, adding interest, naturally, because that they, they borrowed it some years ago, adding interest, this goes up to 11.5 lakh crores. Now, all of us know who these companies are. They were borrowed for one project, which failed, but they have other assets. Why are you not confiscating those assets and getting the money back? I mean, what you have given them as loan is your money, my money in the banks. It's people's money. 
but if a farmer defaults on the loans, you will attach his uh, you know, land, you will attach his cattle, etc., leading to distressed farmers and suicides that are growing. But you are not doing anything to the corporates. Secondly, stop giving these concessions, tax concessions to the corporates. On an average, they have been to the tune of 5 lakh crores every year. Now, even if you collect a half of this amount, a 5 lakh crore rupees corpus fund with the government of India to start public investment is a huge amount of money. And if you build your infrastructure, start building your infrastructure, give new jobs, and th through the jobs when people get the money, when they start spending, then domestic demand, demand grows, then the manufacturing will grow, and then, you know, everything happens, and that is the sustainable cycle of economic growth. This is the left's alternative. This is possible. This is possible with your existing resources themselves. You don't have to borrow anything, you don't have to do anything except change your priorities. That is the point. What are your priorities? Pro big business to maximize profits or pro people for improving the welfare? So that is the thing that can be easily be done, but that requires the political will. The communal polarization that you are talking about has got two dimensions, which we got to clearly understand. Right from the freedom struggle onwards, there was one school of thought, which the there were twin expressions. One was RSS, the other one was Muslim League, which said India should not be a secular democratic, uh, you know, republic, but it should be uh, its character should be defined by the religious affiliation of its people. One talked of the Islamic State, one talked of the Hindu Rashtra. Unfortunately, Islamic State succeeded in the partition of India, for which we are still paying the price of, 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 of what has happened. Now, inside the country, the rest of India, the Hindu Rashtra had never given up its, uh, its objective. The fact that they could not achieve that objective in 47 is what, out of that frustration, led to Mahatma Gandhi's assassination. But that didn't stop them, stop their activities. They continue. They're continuing even today. And that is the whole object, to convert the secular democratic Indian Republic into their version of what they call a Hindu Rashtra, which is essentially a Hindutva Rashtra. And where the basic slogan of this was that Hindi, Hindu, Hindustan. That is not only religion, but language, the culture, the everything else that followed has to be under one, one singular domain. That is one of the basic objective. The second one is these three years of the rule, the discontent that has grown, the only way to deflect the discontent is through communal polarization. That's why what is the Prime Minister talking about today? Saying that he wanted to help Kedarnath the temple modernization, but the government, central government did not. Is that the issue? Today your, you know, Dalits are being massacred. Your minorities are being attacked in the name of cow protection. You, you are you are having these uh, moral policing forces today, you know, harassing our youth, saying what they should eat, what they should wear, whom they should befriend, etc. On all these matters, the Prime Minister is silent. Today, the UP Chief Minister talks about Taj Mahal, you know, a bit, as that controversy is generated. And then, the, but he says that Ram Mandir will be the agenda, in the next two years, Ram Mandir will come into existence. So, their whole agenda is the entire Hindutva polarizing agenda. They are absolutely not talking about anything connected with people's livelihood every day, whether the Prime Minister or their, you know, Chief Ministers of their states, etc. So this is the other dimension of this communal polarization, is to deflect people's attention, hoping that the discontent against their policies and their rule will not generate into a political opposition to them, that will lead them to the defeat. What is the Prime Minister now doing, manipulating the situation in Gujarat, not announcing the uh, elections there, and what the EC has uh, complied uh, to his uh, so-called uh, request or, or demand or whatever it may be. Now he's going around every day announcing some scheme or the other. All these are old schemes. The so-called, uh, that uh, sea route that he talked of in, in Gujarat, is something that has been happening from Ernakulam to Kochi for a long, long time uh, in, in Kerala. 
which was initiated when under the earlier left-wing government. So all this is just recycling all this. But the communal polarization is the only way in which they are seeking to divide the people on communal lines so that the people's movement does not generate a political alternative against them. You see, the Congress that is going to be is very important Congress in the sense that we will define and articulate our alternatives before the people. Like I've just told you about the economic alternative that we have. I mean, this will be our alternative to the people and appealing them to support those political forces like us who will bring about this political shift. You require a shift in the direction of the policies, what we discussed earlier. So that is the importance of this Congress.